clerk's jealous. Um, all right, I will call the meeting back to order to reconvene in open session. We were in closed session earlier. Um, so welcome everyone to the Amory School District uh, Board of Education. I believe Mr. Durfler has to start out because this is the reorganization session. Okay, we have reorganization as the first item on the docket. Um, I, I have to be the person that begins this in that we're reorganizing by electing official officers at this time, uh, which would imply that we don't have officers, so I would run the meeting until we select uh, the person to run the meeting. So we will elect the officers at this time, taking nominations for president. I nominate Chelsea Whitley for president. And that was Aaron, I believe. Yes. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. And that was Dale that seconded. Any other nominations? Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you, Chelsea. Unmute, Chelsea. You still have to unmute. It still is muting you. All right. Um, now we'll move ahead with nominations for vice president. Are there any nominations for vice president? I would nominate Keith Anderson. Anderson for the position of vice president. Okay. Uh, any other nominations? I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe you need to um, need a second. second uh, nomination. I, I request nominations three times, and if there's no other nominations, then um, if we're all in favor and nobody's opposed, then that person's nominated, from my understanding. Yeah. Okay. So are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations for vice president? Okay. Um, all in favor of Keith Anderson being vice president, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, uh, the next nomination is for the uh, clerk. Are there no uh, nominations for the clerk? Nominate. Oh, sorry, Dale. I'll nominate Dale Johnson. Are there any nominations for clerk? Any nominations? Any other nominations? All right, I will close nominations. All in favor of Dale Johnson for being clerk, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, uh, next, uh, Dale Johnson would be no nominated clerk for the next uh, year term. The next <clears throat> position is for treasurer. Are there any nominations for treasurer? I nominate Shar. Are there any other nominations? Yeah. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Okay, I will close nominations. And all in favor of Shar Gwena being uh, treasurer for the uh, 2021 school year. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. So that takes care of the reorganization session. Uh, next, we will move on to the uh, meeting dates for the 2020-2021 uh, calendar. You'll see on uh, board book, Becky will put those up on the screen, uh, the Amory Board of Education regular meeting dates for 2021 running from June 22nd of 2020 through June 28th of 
there's nothing that you need to do with those. Simply, those are the dates. Uh, there isn't any action that needs to be taken on those dates. The designation of district depositories. And uh, those are the standard that we've used for probably decades. Uh, Bremer, Wisconsin, Wells Fargo Associated Trust Company, Chase, Wisconsin Investment Series, Cooperative, and MD Trust. And the appointment of WASB correspondent and convention, convention delegate, uh, we need to take, I believe, action on one of those two we have. Do we have a document that goes with that, Becky? Okay, there's no document that goes with that. We have the WASD um, convention delegate as Aaron, um, but we need a delegate up to CISA um, uh, for CISA 11 for representation. There's actually a meeting coming up here in a couple of weeks, so we'll need a CISA 11 person. Would anyone? And I, and I have to attend that meeting anyway because I'm on the CISA board of control, so I would be happy to also be the delegate since I'm going to be zooming in anyway. Since you're already there, that makes a lot of sense to me. That makes well, sense. I, yes. <laughs> I would nominate Aaron then for that. Okay. Then authorization. We don't need a motion for that though, correct? No, you don't need a motion. I agree. Only you have to appoint her, right? The, the authorization for use of independent hearing officers for expulsion hearings we have for the longest time used Weld Riley um, as that outfit. So I would recommend that you do that again. And then lastly, board appointed committees. There is a visual for this. There um, are quite a few committees that have board membership, building and grounds, you'll see. It. Keith is there, Community Ed, Dale is there, Curriculum Oversight, Char, Lena, the Finance Committee, which is an offshoot of the strategic plan uh, some two, three years ago. We're looking for a Finance Committee representative there. Uh, we have Human Growth and Development. Shah represents in that committee. Information and Technology is Aaron Hosking, and then Outdoor Education Committee is also Aaron Hosking. So the only spot we have open is the Finance Committee uh, so we would need someone to be a part of that. I could do it unless somebody really has a strong desire to be on it. I think I was on that committee in the past. Uh, we meet probably five, six times a year. Um, things sort of got truncated at the end. And we were going to meet in March and May, and that just didn't happen. Great if you could step in. And I'll turn it back over to you, Chelsea. Okay. Um, next, we'll move on to the consent agenda items. I believe that Aaron had the vouchers this month. So um, I'll turn it over to Aaron to make a motion whether we should approve them. Yes, I had the vouchers and I will make a motion to approve the consent agenda items. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, the uh, vouchers are approved. Uh, next on to community comments. I'm not sure how that works. Um, is there- well, Community comments, the board meeting agenda uh, posting is pretty clear. It states that if somebody uh, was to make a um, community comment, they needed to submit an email to me by 4.30 today, uh, indicating they wanted to make comment, and I did not receive anything via email by 4.30 today. So we don't have any comments. Okay, then I guess we'll move on to the administrative uh, department reports. Okay, we'll start at the high school. Uh, I will turn it over to Josh and we'll pretend we're all sitting in the room and we'll run right down the table. So Josh Gould, you're up. All right, um, been extremely busy here. Um, AP testing has been going on um, in the virtual platform. Um, we've done our best to take input from kids as tests have been happening. 
to try to relay forward to kids taking tests about potential troubleshooting snafus, any issues that have popped up. Um, it's you know, we're making the best of it as is every single school district in the nation who was doing this new format on the AP tests. Um, we're uh, at the point now on our virtual learning platform where we have stopped with any new lessons and we're basically now in um, catch up weeks here. We're trying to help get as many kids through to the finish line as possible. And so that's really what the focus is of this week and next week. There are several kids who have really been taking care of business already that are pretty much done minus a, a final exam project or test. So things are going okay there. Um, I'd like to give a huge thank you to uh, Karen Ganji and Tracy Hendrickson specifically for all the hard work and preparation for our senior awards night last week on uh, May 13th. Hopefully some of you guys were able to chime in and watch that. A number of other people that were involved in that, um, Clint Wallen had a huge spot in that from a technological standpoint, David Manning, Brian Melberg, uh, Jeff and myself, um, Sean presenting, um, turned into a really great night and uh, you know, once again, really highlighted just how special our community is with all the money that, that we are able to give out. Um, total of 57 students applied for scholarships. 54% um, um, of them were girls, 35% were boys. 77% of the boys who applied received scholarships. 90% of the girls who applied received scholarships. Um, there was over $162,000 awarded in scholarship money. Um, and then we've since had a couple other big ones come through here within the last week that have been highlighted on social media. And we will continue to highlight those as we find out about them and, and get those out there on social media. Um, we also gave out 142 awards. So that was exciting. Um, future events. Um, Thursday night, we've got our um, senior parade drive through at campus. Um, that event will be starting up here at 7 o'clock. Uh, the Emory Police Department will be leading that parade through campus and the fire department will be handling the caboose duties. Um, the organization will, hand, will, will take place at Jorgensen Field. The parade will go through the front of the high school, down Warrior Way to the intermediate school, through the loop there, off to the middle school. Take a left, drive past the football field, back behind the elementary school and one last drive by across the high school and kids will be on their way. Um, our last day of school is scheduled for next Friday, May 29th and hopefully we'll have the vast majority of all students taken care of before then, but that is our last day. And we still do have graduation penciled in for July 16th with multiple plans in place for that day. Um, Despite the changes that have occurred here or, or within the state, it has not impacted the school closing. As you all know, our campus is closed to large events through um, June 30th. So we're still going to hold with our July 16th date for graduation. We've got our plan A, plan B, plan C for that day, and we will do the best to give the kids and families um, everything they deserve for graduation. That is it from the high school, unless you guys have some questions for me while I'm I have a question, um, just how, um, how are we doing with students, or I guess kind of how many students have not checked in at all? Do we have students that have not checked in at all? What percentage of those and, uh, you know, how many are we talking and are we, what are we doing with those kids? Sure. Um, in terms of not checking in at all or doing anything, we're probably talking about 5%. Um, with those kids, we've called families, we've called home, we've called, we, we've emailed, we've gone through almost every resource possible to try to connect with those families. Um, and so we have another, I would say, 10, 15% that have been extremely hesitant in terms of the work that they've been able to do to get done, whether it's work, whether it's motivation, whatever it is. Um, and that's that group of kids that we're really working hard with right now at this time. So if students have not, you know, done anything, does that just mean, you know, I'm just wondering, what does that mean, I guess? We are not giving any kids an F 
for this term, but they will have it recorded as no pass on their transcript. So they will not get credit for a class that they didn't do any work in. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? All right, Thomas, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Um, I think oh. you did somehow. No. You're good. Okay. I just want to commend all the staff, uh, you know, K-12 and for pre-K-12 for all the work they've done. Uh, to ju we just finished up at six o'clock here, the food delivery, and there's just a large group of people making that happen every day. Um, and, you know, this, a lot of people, the staff have really been working hard, posting um, educational videos. We've been using Screencast-O-Matic as the tool to post links to educational videos of their instruction, um, of course, Zoom sessions, and then posting with online platforms. Um, I want to really commend uh, Andrew Uhaus and Kate Weisenbeck, who helped us run our spring fling. It's the first digital spring fling. Our 21st ever spring fling was done all digitally. Kids participating in a lot of fun, different competitions, down to online Kahoot quizzes and an online talent show, which happened on Friday. And I think it helped brighten some spirits for a lot of kids. And to be honest, I was a little worried because it was towards the end of the term and I was worried um, that we would get in the way of what the kids would be doing and it actually increased the amount of work that they also did. So getting them connected was helpful. Um, we have staff returning obviously tomorrow in the next two weeks. It's going to be a real busy time at the middle school. We're working on improving how we do digital learning just to be prepared and in general um, the strength that platforms can have for kids even if they're here in person. So we're improving our digital learning hub and we're working on platform management between Google Classroom and Microsoft 365 and how we can better deliver things for kids. That's one of the things they'll be training on. Um, we have a lot of work, not just getting the assignments back to kids and the, the computers and the books all checked in and everything that's going to happen over these next two weeks, but staff are also in training on um, standards-based grading with the PLC process and trying to improve that as we start that next school year. We're working on our new schedule and the strategies that a teacher needs to take and how they should teach differently under a 75-minute period. Um, we're still working on improving our social emotional learning as we move into a much more structured advisory time under our new schedule. We're really excited about that. And then we have some work on PBIS and programming and how we're working with students. Um, we have some problems to work on, just like every school does. Um, right now I have to disproportionate number of boys that get slips and that's been a problem that we've had on and off and it was a, another concern this year and it's something that I'm really going to be trying to address starting this week and into next year. And then finally, we're also working on uh, prepping for summer school, hoping to have summer school in July. And I know Laura Sjogren's really worked hard as a summer school coordinator, making sure that that program um, gets going in, in the positive direction. Hopefully, we will get the go-ahead to teach our school or our students summer school in July. We'll have to see. That's kind of what's going on at the middle school. I can open up for questions. I guess I kind of had the same question, how many or what percentage students have not checked in at all? Right, we have, um, I would say about three to four per grade. And those students that aren't doing it, um, it's not for a lack of like the, the effort that we're trying to provide for them. Um, we've been, not only have teachers been calling, I've been calling, we sent some letters home with concerns about, you know, your child's not participating. Um, case managers have been calling, uh, counselors have been calling. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and we, some of them, we just can't, um, we can't get a, a, a real significant response on participation. And so we're just like Josh, we have a, we're on a pass fail. And so I have a handful of kids that may not pass every class because of the lack of not do, of basically not doing anything for us. Um, the only issue for me is we don't have a permanent transcript that's different than the high school. So those grades don't follow with them when they leave here, but it's still an indicator of the parents to the parents that their child did not meet the standards that we would require or expect for them. Um, it's been really difficult. 
I think to be honest with you, it's another thing I want to talk about this digital learning is if we ever go back to what we need to make improvements um, for all kids and getting them more actively involved in, in participating in a higher um, manner. Um, I would say 80% of the kids did a really nice job. And then, you know, the next 20% struggled. And then there was just a handful that did nothing. Most of the kids did something, but there was quite a few kids that even though they were participating a little bit, certainly didn't learn or participate at the level that we would expect them or we would hope they would. I appreciate that power school still had grades because that is a little bit more motivation for my middle schooler versus mm -hmm. if it just would have said, you know, he's passing. Um, so I, I appreciated that at least I could kind of say, hey, you need to do better because you only got, you know, 75% or 80% or, you know, whatever it was, 50%. Um, yeah. So I am thankful that there were still those grades in there, even if, you know, even if ultimately it's just a pass fail. Yeah. And, you know, we struggled with technology and access to technology for certain families. We circumvent that or we're going to get around that by providing paper copies, but they're not getting the, as much instruction, the direct instruction that you would hope. And if we were to go to this again, I think we need to be better prepared to provide better technology resources to some of those families. That would be a concern of mine or something that, to work on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amory Intermediate School. I will not repeat some of the things that Tom has already said, uh, but I do would like to shout out to the uh, teachers. Just did an amazing job during this uh, shut down or learning at home. Um, I'll go right to the point. I, I don't know exactly how many of our kids um, have not participated at all. Uh, we're in the process of getting all of our written materials back. Um, some just came back tonight and, um, and so we're still processing that. But I, I would say very similar um, that I've been involved with families, um, teachers have called, we've written letters, emails, all of those same things, uh, really trying to get kids involved. And um, so we're hoping for, um, we'll see, uh, a lot of paperwork was coming in today, which is great. Um, and we are actually going on a pass incomplete. And the incomplete will not be something that the kids will need to make up. But what our teachers wanted to pass on to next year's teacher was just an indication of how much was, uh, how much of the students did, how much of the work did they do during the at-home learning. And so the incomplete plus um, teachers were writing comments on the report card will give that teacher an indication of, of where they were this spring. So all our students will be passing and going on to next year's class. I know that was, I've heard a couple of parents um, concerns about that. No, we're not holding anyone back, but there will be some kids that will receive some incomplete. So I hope that explains that. Um, moving on, we at the intermediate school hired five teachers during this crazy time of, um, you know, I found out that I, I'm definitely a sit in the room, get a vibe off the person um, to hire them with the little four by four inch square. Um, it, it, it was really hard, uh, but I do believe we got five great candidates. I'm looking forward to actually, um, I've met three of them in person and looking forward to, to working with them. And then also we have been compiling curriculum, which is later on the agenda for you to um, approve tonight. So I'll be explaining that later, but that's a process to get all of that in and compile it and um, work with the administrative team as well. So I think that's about it, unless there are questions. Thank you. Turn up, Cheryl. Okay, got it. I started talking without unmuting. Um, like the others, first, 
first and foremost, we need to say thank you to our staff. Um, all of them, paras, custodians, secretaries, teachers, all came to play in the last, since, you know, since this COVID-19 hit our school system and our world. Um, I'm very proud of the work that we have done. We did not go to school and be trained on how to respond under a situation like this. And they were just amazing. They worked as teams, so every grade level, was very consistent in the materials that were sent out to our, our students. Um, they contacted, they were, the, um, the goal was for every family to be contacted at least every other week, if not weekly. We, um, the reports that we got back were just so positive. The virtual learning format that we used um, was uh, an app called Seesaw and um, we are all at different levels of knowledge using that application. So um, we have gathered our technology department, our, our technology committee together who represented each grade level and um, have decided as, as to the goals that we want to have going forward now in preparation if this should um, unfortunate thing happen again. Um, so yeah, we very, very happy with how um, our staff has moved forward and educated our nation's children. Um, some other things that you should be aware of. Um, I had my first, and this was an unprecedented, another unprecedented um, activity took place today. We had a parents as partners meeting via Zoom. And it was, it covered um, such things as our school budget, our carnival, um, teacher appreciation day, our upcoming, our fundraiser that is taking place this fall. So that was really good and it was good to see the um, parent faces as well as some of the little kiddos that peeked in with their parents at home. Um, the next two weeks are going to be extremely busy and um, we will be packing up our students um, materials, lockers, desks. We um, are very hopeful that our families will come and pick up their children's goodies. We have really some great surprises that are going to be sent home with their items. We have um, at our school, we are not doing report cards, we're doing a warrior certificate of completion. You know, our children from ages four through nine are very dependent on uh, an adult being part of their child's education. And so um, we're, we are, we've made the decision not to grade, but to um, send home a certificate of completion. Also with their goodies is going to be a report card companion, which basically will, paint the picture for the parents as to where their child should be at this point in time in the year. And um, it, it, it pretty much just outlines our essential standards and it gives examples of what that essential standard looks like. Every child in our, at Leon Elementary School and at the intermediate school is going to be receiving a three pack of books at their grade level, a brand new, a brand new books from Scholastic that was made possible through um, library. It's basically um, reading is fundamental. It's money that we get from the state. And we found that um, typically the book giveaway would happen during the school day. We have decided to, to purchase books. So everybody will be getting a new set of books, which we're excited about. And then, of course, the yearbook, if families ordered the yearbook, that will be going home and some special um, art projects, um, especially those that were made in our kiln. So we are, again, encouraging families to please take the time to come and pick up their children's items. Um, like Orr, I hired a couple of people. I hired a Title I teacher because Mrs. Kostanek, wonderful Mrs. Kostanek, is transitioning to the middle school. Definitely Tom's win, um, our loss, but we um, did hire Miss Eisenman, who is a 
current 4K teacher to take Mrs. Kostanek's place. And then we have a 4K teacher opening. And I'm very happy to say, much to my surprise, the last time I checked, we had like 18 candidates that have applied. Not the 100 that we used to get, but it's better than the you know three or four that we got last year when we were hiring. So I'm excited about that. And that will take place um, early June. We hope to fill that position. So um, the one other thing I want to mention is our 4K orientation has been rescheduled for Friday, August 31st. And um, if you have a 4K child, a child who is going to be four on or before September 1st, and you have not sent in your registration paperwork, please do so. We want to make sure that you get invited to our orientation, which is just a fabulous event for our new friends beginning at Leon Elementary School. I think that's all for today. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Okay, pupil services. Brad, you are up. Yeah, just to start off, of course, to echo um, my colleagues down the line that um, a situation and scenario like this certainly brings out um, really the best in our staff. And um, so many have risen to the occasion in terms of maintaining um, communication with students, with parents, with one another. A lot of moving pieces. Um, I just pulled the uh, case management um, survey prior to the meeting here and we've got 223 um, students identified with special education services here in the district. That means that there were 223 IEP meetings, evaluations. Um, 20 of those occurred in the month of April alone. Um, and all done you know, through a virtual platform. So to be able to shift oftentimes um, in some of the comments that I've heard from teachers who wish they could do more, um, I've tried to, tried to soften that, um, that attitude by saying that you had 72 hours to prepare for you know, this shift to an online virtual platform um, and you've done a wonderful job. Um, so, in terms of things left to do, um, there are, um, you know, we need to archive those reports, communicate with parents, um, make sure that they have um, received all their IEP paperwork. We will continue to issue progress reports um, in the same manner that grades are issued. Um, for those students where progress um, is, is sort of unknown due to a difficulty in contact and communication or evaluation of work, um, we will still be issuing a progress report, uh, but it will um, mention the school closure, um, the difficulty in able to report progress due to the COVID-19 closure. Um, some of that language was um, suggested through DPI, so that's where we got that and um, helped um, case managers craft that language. Um, others, um, things just we want to mention the pupil services team, our counseling group, our school psychs, um, all of them have been, um, as, you, as uh, my colleagues have suggested here, um, kind of the second and third point of contact oftentimes, teacher not hearing, not reaching out. Um, counseling has been very involved in trying to make sure that every student has remained engaged over the last couple months here. Um, and uh, they just met today, uh, for example, in planning and looking to um, how, um, depending on how we move forward, um, will they pivot their services in order to continue to support kids uh, socially and emotionally, which is mentioned by a, a few folks here as well tonight. Um, so just wanna give credit to them and um, the work they're doing in implementing Second Step, reviewing some um, social emotional learning standards, and then given this, this new crisis, um, really adjusting and tailoring even more so um, to anything that we can do to support kids, families, teachers. Um, I mean, in thinking about that, that, that idea of Maslow's hierarchy and we all need safety, we all need support uh, before we can get to the learning. I think that's all I have tonight. If you have any questions, let me know.
Okay, we're on to our action items. So Chelsea, you're back. Sorry, I didn't know if you could hear, hear me earlier when I was <laughs> talking. Um, so yeah, on to action items now. The first action item is donations to the district by uh, Sean Durkler. And we have a couple of donations to the district. There's a PowerPoint that you should be seeing on your screen now. Uh, 600 pounds of cheese curds, thanks to the efforts of Rich Miller and Don Timmerman. 152 pudding cups from Conagra and sandwich bags from the Amory Women's Club. And that was all part of our meal pickup process that we uh, use those donations for. On the next slide, you'll see 1,032 pounds of cheese donated by Burnett Dairy and delivered by Shell Trucking, resulting in two pounds of cheese for each child. And we had a donation from the St. Croix Valley Foundation of $2,000 uh, used in, in response to the COVID-19 crisis and the funds were used to offset uh, the, the cost of packaging meals for our community members. And as a reminder, we have uh, fed some 500 plus students uh, from our 1500 population basically since the middle of March when this hit all the way up through and including today. So we are still doing that process. And that is it for donations. It is an action item. We need to accept those items. Okay, um, so we need a, is there a motion to accept these uh, donation items? So moved. Aaron. Is there a second? I'll second that. With a big thank you. Thank you. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, the motion carries and the school district can accept those donations. Thank you. Uh, next action item uh, will be the WIAA membership renewal uh, presented by Mr. Fern. You got it. All right, folks, this is kind of a rubber stamp item. Um, we have 16 sports that we're planning on hosting again next year for the 2020-2021 school year feels like forever since we've competed, uh, to, to be completely honest, early March, I believe. Um, 15 of those sports we're going to offer in district here. Uh, one sport, girls hockey, will continue to co-op uh, with, with Somerset. Um, other than that, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, nothing's changing for the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, we're just hopeful that we can compete again this fall. Um, it's an ever-changing and evolving situation. Uh, we'll continue to follow guidelines, but our athletes are eager to get out and, and our coaches too. Um, and along those lines, I want to thank the, the board for your support with our spring coaches um, and, and, and our athletes. We've tried to do some, uh, we've, we've done some things to try to highlight our athletes, especially our, our senior athletes. Um, but I want to thank you for your support. I know we've asked uh, to help support our coaches um, earlier this spring. So thank you. Uh, also, just another update in the athletics world. We have hired a couple of assistant coaches. We've hired a JV uh, volleyball coach. Um, and we've hired a middle school assistant cross country coach. Um, but at this time, I'll ask for your approval um, of the membership renewal uh, from the WIAA. So, so Jeff, this is Dale. And I have just a question. Um, don't we have a, I guess it would be a boys tennis team in the spring? We do have a boys tennis team in the spring, correct. That, so, needs, to be, that needs to be added, so. I think it just got missed, so. Um, it did. Okay, correct. that would be yep. included, right? So. Yep, we don't want to, we don't want to advertise that we, we are not having boys yeah. tennis next spring. So, in fact, they might, uh, I see, uh, they might have a new surface that they're playing on. So. All right, perfect. Love boys tennis. I would make a motion that we uh, approve the WIA membership renewal. Second that. And that includes the addition of tennis to the spring. Yes, um, with the addition of tennis, boys tennis. Okay. All right, um, so all in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, the WIA membership renewal is approved. Thank you. Well, thank you for highlighting those seniors. That's been neat to see. And it's been nice to be able to do something to recognize our senior athletes. Yep, you got it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, so the next action item uh, is the uh, 2021 PLE and pricing. PLE stands for Paid Lunch Equity, and this will be presented by Stacy Nelson. Hi, everyone. Um, so yes, I'm here to talk about the PLE tool and our hopes in determining what pricing will be next school year. If you can go to the next slide. So the paid lunch equity um, is basically a giant Excel document that helps us make sure that we are using our federal funds diligently and not using those extra funds that we get for our free and reduced meals towards the cost of those students that do not qualify for that benefit. Um, and it's also to help make sure that we are charging enough for our meals to um, provide nutritious and healthy options to our students. Next slide. So um, the tool, after I entered in all of the information, it had indicated that they believe that um, the increase should be 19 cents. Um, the numbers are pulled from last year's weighted average, and then it also takes into account our um, meals that we served this October and it determines what the cost covered to decide how much meals should be raised. According to the tool, it was suggested for a 19 cent um, average weight. Uh, last year's just in comparison was 17 cents. Um, the graphic on the right is um, just kind of playing around with the pricing to see what those prices would look like to get that weighted average. So line one is indicative of um, lean elementary, line two would be um, the intermediate school, three the middle school, and four the high school. Um, current prices right now, um, the lean uh, elementary through fifth grade is at 270, so it was a 10 cent increase. Uh, middle school is currently at two ninety five, dollars and the high school is currently at $3. You can go to the next slide. Um, so if you guys recall, last year the USDA um, through DPI put out an exemption for the school food authorities that had a positive or zero balance in their Fund 50 account. Um, so they also sent out that exemption this school Hi. year. Sorry about that. Um, so this school year, our balance as of December 31st was positive. If you can go to the next slide, please. Um, I've included the historical balance just so you can kind of see what the trend is on that. Um, this year, our balance as of December 31st was positive at 204000 Um So, let's see. The things that I think that need to be considered though when looking at this is that um, there's gonna be some changes in our budget. Um, and that's all due to the COVID-19 um, is a big thing. We have expenses and revenue that we are not sure what is going to happen. Um, including labor, and then also loss of revenue um, due to catering. Um, I know I have spoken with Nina with Clubhouse, and there are 
talks of changing the way possible meal services um, carried out next school year. Um, so there's just some things that might be coming up that will change the budget. Um, also a big revenue generator for us is the school food service program. Uh, we are currently operating under that, so there will be revenue from that this year. However, this is our last year qualifying, um, unless our free and reduced percentages go above 50% at one of our sites. The closest right now is the elementary, and they are at 46%. I'm not sure if those percentages will change due to what is going on right now. Um, and then last but not not least important is obviously the children and families. I really feel that if we were to raise prices right now, it would not be of benefit to them at all. You can go to the next slide. So my recommendations for going into the 2020-21 school year would be to not raise any meal prices at this time. Um, I think that the overall being of the operation, raising the meal prices could account for less participation because people can't afford it. Um, and it wouldn't help the students, which is the main reason I'm here. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? So just a question, is this recommendation for the 2020-2021 school year then, right? Yes, sorry, I just saw that that did not okay. have the correct date. Yeah, yeah okay. This and will so be for next can, school year. Okay. And we can um, leave the prices the same. That's your recommendation, and we should be fine. Yeah, we um, qualify through the exemption to not raise the prices. Um, the tool indicated raising, but it also did last year. Um, so it's really. We qualify for an exemption. Sure. Okay. Thanks. And we raised the prices last year, correct? We only raised um, milk prices because our milk prices went up and I was aware of that. Um, and then we raised the extra entree cost and the adult meals. But other than that, we left student meals the same as the 18-19 school year. Okay, any other questions or discussion? I'm in favor of not raising the prices for next year. Um, do you think that, again, it's hard to foresee, but um, maybe then next year we'll need to raise them for the, for the following year? I mean, eventually are we going to need to raise them, but we can put it off for another year? Is that? Um, I feel that, I mean, everything is going up in expense wise, so eventually we probably will have to look at raising them, but at this time with the health of the Fund 50, I just don't see that as the best option for the community and the students. Well, I think that's great. I would make a motion that we uh, keep the prices the same as Stacy has recommended. Second that. I'm all in favor of the 2021 PLE and pricing recommendations. Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, the um, 2021 school year PLE and pricing recommendations are, are approved. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you. All right, next will be the um, Building and grounds bids. I will help George uh, with that presentation and he will certainly help me. He's the knowledge behind this operation. Last month, you took action to approve some projects in the district for, district for building and grounds. Uh, the addition to the tennis courts in the same location right next to it. Middle school tiling, high school tiling, and then light the light issue in the auditorium. 
and you asked to see some specifics in regards to bids. I did share with you at that time and I'll share with you again. In some cases, there aren't more than one bid because there's only one bid to be had on certain kinds of work. We simply only had one bidder. So George, I'm not sure which order you wanna take these in, but I'm gonna turn it over to you and I will assist where I can. Okay, um, I don't uh, I don't see any of the uh, bids. I didn't know if there was a slideshow of those or not. Uh, no, there is a slide deck that goes with that. I wanted you to be able to speak to what those bids were. Let's start with the tennis court because we've had a lot of conversation about that. There is an excavation cost, and then there's also the the surface itself, and then the surrounding specs the fence and so forth. Could you speak to us about that? Yeah, um, I can definitely wing these. Uh, the tennis courts, uh, we went with uh, Monarch simply because they needed to be able to manage all the time frames uh, as far as when that is cured uh, for the painters. Um, they manage their own uh, excavators so they would make sure that those excavators had what they needed uh, done so they could get in there and put the blacktop down. Uh, and I reached out to a few different companies to try and get uh, another bid, um, but there was, there was nobody obviously that was gonna be able to deal with, uh, uh, compete against a local blacktop company that's only seven or eight miles out of town. So what I did ask, uh, Nicholas to do was to reach out to um, local uh, people that could uh, throw a bid to them on the project. And um, they, they did their reaching out and gave me what information they got back. I did, but I was muted. Uh, next is the middle school and high school tiling project. Okay, uh, did you say I was muted along that first? I was muted, not you. Oh, okay, all right, good. We heard you. Okay, uh, it, I believe he said uh, to move on to the tiling at the high school. That is uh, correct. I, did, I was able to get three bidders. I probably reached out to eight to 10. Um, and the guy that uh, came in uh, the lowest happened to be uh, a fairly local guy out of Milltown uh, that has been doing uh, all of our tile and carpet work uh, over the last few years. Um, it's actually the same installer that Dwayne Lumen used for years. Um, it's uh, Mr. Chemist out of Milltown. So uh, it was nice to see him come in low and um, the, they just did the um, Montessori classrooms. They did uh, the carpet uh, in, in the high school. So I'm happy, uh, happy with their work. And I have the actual bid documents if you want to see them. I just queued them up in my own email. Uh, so let us know if you want to see those. Uh, the last is the auditorium, and I misspoke last month by talking lights and sound. It's just the lighting in the auditorium, and I don't have an exact number of events that take place in the auditorium, but it's more than a few. Not recently, but more than a few, so we've got a lot of traffic that runs through there. It's not just Amory School District traffic, it's Amory and then uh, communities that surround that come in to use our facility, and it's time those uh, lights are 23 years old and they are certainly no longer new. So, George, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, um, there was some good news that came along with that. We had budgeted for, uh, I think, 150000 and uh, the guys who got it, that XLAV company, uh, they came in uh, quite a bit less. 
Uh, we, when you looked at the bids, they were, they were way over 50. Um, some of them didn't even, I didn't even add the uh, electrical wiring to them because just with the light fixtures, they were already over what the, the XLAV bid came in at. Um, I'm not an uh, expert in what it takes to um, light the auditorium for any theatrical uh, performances. Uh, I'm just to turn the light on and hopefully it's bright enough guy. But um, Clint uh, worked individually and felt good about uh, the types of lighting, uh, the dimming packages, uh, and the front ends as far as managing um, all that equipment. So I, I kind of did the dirty work and, and rounded up some guys to bid it and did the walkthroughs, but uh, Clint took over when it came to uh, the individual items. This is Becky. I'm just going to jump in and let the board know that there's a copy of all of the bids in the yellow folder for you. So those projects, uh, tennis court tiling at the middle school, tiling at the high school and auditorium, those are uh, set to be completed before our school year begins. If possible, the only one that may not be tennis courts, that's an undertaking that might not be fully complete by the time our kids hopefully get on the court in the second week of August. Uh, but we are hopeful that certainly by the time they compete with matches that we would have that ready to roll. But that is not a for sure. Questions that you may have for George, and again, those bids are in your yellow folder if you're looking for actual copies of those. You're up if you have questions. So you would need to take an action on those bids that we're moving forward with those bidders for each of those projects at this time. I will uh, make a motion to um, approve those bids. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Building and grounds bids, um, as recommended by um, Mr. Sigworth, are approved. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to student accident insurance renewal, which will be um, by Andy Depp. Good evening. Um, this is our annual renewal for the student uh, insurance that covers uh, secondary insurance for all of our students and athletes. Um, it's secondary to uh, their own personal insurance or family insurance. Um, there's no increase in um, premium this year for the third year in a row. Um, if you move on to the second page, um, you'll see that actually we had quite a few benefits paid and from my conversations with them, there probably should have been an increase, but they decided not to based on the climate and everything going on at the moment. And so that's where we're at, and we just need your approval to continue the uh, insurance for uh, our students and athletes. I guess I'm just curious about a little bit information of these claims. Um, are these, you know, injuries that then their own personal insurance didn't cover, and so the school covers? I guess I'm kind oh, of wondering. The yeah, no, they're, when they go through their own personal insurance first, anything that's not covered goes through their student insurance that we pay a premium on, but the district does not pay for it. The actual insurance company covers that. So when you look at it, basically we had $23,000 in benefits paid and it costs us 22950 for the you know for all of our students. So basically... That's where I'm saying that usually there would be an increase, increase associated with that, but, but there wasn't. Anything related to athletics also, um, Pam has that information too, so she can um, provide more detailed information if you'd like. The best way to think of it is as a backstop for our family. Without this approval for student assurance, they would be 
sort of hung out to dry if their own insurance didn't cover things. If a kid gets a concussion playing name your sport and they have to repeatedly doctor for that, that's going to get costly over time. And if their insurance doesn't cover it, we're sort of providing as a backup on that. And uh, without that, I think some of our families would, would struggle. So this is this isn't something students or families have to purchase. This is just a blanket policy we have for, to cover everybody. Correct. There is, a, so. they can purchase additional coverage on top of this, but there's really not a need to since we already provide this. Um, but yeah, th this definitely is a good idea because not all insurance is created equal as we all know. Yeah, well, that's great. I make a motion that we approve the purchase through student assurance services. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, the um, motion carries for the student accident insurance renewal. Is approved, thank you. All right, next up, uh, the Applied Arts Curriculum Order by Ms. Schock. Okay, so just a reminder of our process is that we have um, identified a curriculum area and they study for the year. And then at the end of the year, we asked for their recommendations and then the money becomes available for those uh, purchases after the first of the year. Or I mean, sorry, after the first of July. Um, so this year, the study group was uh, Music K-12, Family and Consumer Ed, Middle School and High School, Art K-12, Business Ed, which actually is now extends all the way to the elementary because we have third grade Montessori kids doing keyboarding. So I'm gonna say pretty much three through 12 and um, for business ed. So, um, and actually what you see in front of you is the consumable order. Consumables are things that we use up every year. And mainly that happens at the intermediate school and at Leon Elementary. So it's like workbooks, handwriting books, um, some of the things in uh, like Fontas and Pinnell needs to be replaced every year. So the consumables are just that. It's something that we plan for every year and it usually runs us right around 30,000. So this is um, within our budget. And um, so that's the first part of the curriculum. And then if we go to the next part, these are the curricular areas that I just talked about that use the year to study. And um, I'm going to say that if we would um, have had, uh, we asked them to rate their requests into three categories. Uh, absolute need it. Second is it would be really nice to have it. And the third would be a dream to have it. And in these four areas, if we would have gone all the way through to their dream areas, it would have been about $500,000. So obviously we didn't do that because we have right around $150,000 $150, to work with. This is the cover sheet that you see in front of you. We have approved $33,994.45 for the music department. Family consumer ed is a total of 21,406.61. dollars And you can see the split between middle school and high school. Art is $35,234.36. And business ed is $20,644.84 for a total of 111280.26. And if you add in the consumables, it, it's right around 
140,500. We always try to leave a little bit of wiggle room in case shipping goes up. That's a huge cost. We add it in, but there always is um, something that comes up that shipping costs a little bit more. Um, sometimes by the time 1st of July rolls around and we actually place the orders, there might not be something that they got a quote for back in November, December, January. And so then we have to adjust. So um, we're right on track to be within our budget. And then I want, just because of the COVID-19 and the shutdown, our normal process is that our curriculum groups work together. As I said, they give us their wish list. We meet as an administrative team, look over the proposals, and um, either agree or disagree or modify them. And then we send them to the Curriculum Oversight Committee. This year we decided not to meet with the committee, the Curriculum Oversight Committee and the administrative team just approved um, the, re the requests that are before you. But I did email out to the Curriculum Oversight Committee along with Shar, because she is our representative, and, and said, here's what the um, curriculum committees have requested. Here is what the administrative team has approved to go to the school board. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact me, and no one did. So I feel like we also have their approval as well, even though we didn't formally meet. Um, so in front of you is what we are requesting. If you'd like me to go through each of the department um, requests, I can. Otherwise, you see the cover sheet. Um, you indicated there's a that your budget was about one hundred and fifty thousand, right? And then the this total is one hundred and eleven. So, and then the the uh, consumables is thirty thousand. So it's about we are right at about one hundred and forty thousand five hundred. So that's plenty of a buffer to adjust for shipping and the, that's the, what. And there's always things that come up like last year. We had French book or Spanish books, I believe, and they ended up making a mistake and they only ordered half of what they needed. And so right off the bat, we needed $5,000 to get another set of Spanish books. So I, I think we're safely within what we need. If there is extra, then we go down to the next layer of what we've approved that there wasn't funding for. Okay, thank you. Sure. I'll make a motion that we approve the curriculum for next year as presented. I'll, I'll second that um, motion that we approve the applied arts curriculum order. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, the motion carries and the Applied Arts Curriculum order is approved. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda um, will be the uh, second reading of the employee handbooks. I could take those. Uh, to take a step back for a moment, I would like everyone to, to remember that the curriculum order, a portion of that money, has always been, uh, well, it's always all been paid by the district, but a increase to that, that curriculum budget occurred when we passed a referendum in April of 2017. And some of what you just saw passed would not have occurred if that addition to that budget hadn't occurred because nothing gets less expensive, it all gets more expensive. And uh, without the help of our community, we would, we would not have been able to do what we just did. So I wanted to make sure we didn't forget that. The curriculum, or the, sorry, the handbooks, we have two handbooks for certified, or two items for certified staff and two items for support staff. 
Uh, there aren't any changes that have been made since last meeting to the certified staff handbook. Uh, everything that you saw last month is still the same. Uh, there wasn't any recommendations for change. So the certified staff handbook is good to go as it is. The item where there are changes since we met last is the compensation and benefits document. So I'd like to walk through that for you. The first page remained the same. The spot at which you see uh, fairly dramatic changes is there's a lot of green on page four. Uh, what we did there, uh, and I'll give credit where credit is due to Becky Schmidt and Twyla Sikink for making this not only more visually appealing, but more accurate. So underneath where it says health insurance and COBRA, nothing's been changed. It simply has been made more clear. The bulleted points there are the new number of hours that a support staff or a certified staff, sorry, employee would need to meet in order to pay 12%, 35%, or 40% for their premium. So it's just been arranged in a more visually appealing way. The health insurance in lieu of, rather than reinvent the wheel, if you will, this language comes straight from our plan document, which is something that we uh, orchestrate in essence with uh, health partners. And this language is as accurate as it could possibly be because it's right with their health insurance provider and in essence, what it states is if you don't uh, use our insurance, for instance, if you're on your spouse's insurance, you're eligible for a $4,000 in lieu of health insurance payment. If you do use our health insurance, you're not eligible for that. So in those three paragraphs, that's in essence what it spells out. So that is a change from what you saw last month. If you go down a little further um, onto it is page number six. The uh, deceased employee, uh, again, rather than reinvent the wheel, we went to our HRA provider, um, uh, education educator benefits consultants, and we grabbed the language that actually exists there. So I'm going to read it so it's more clear because it wasn't clear prior to um, the revision that you see here. Upon the death of an HRA eligible employee, the vesting requirement of 15 years of service and 56 years of age will be waived. Rather, the HRA will be considered vested upon death, provided that the employee has completed at least 10 years of service with the district. The deceased employee's spouse and or dependents may use these HRA funds to continue medical reimbursements. Further, it says, if a deceased HRA employee has not completed 10 years of service, the HRA balance will be returned to the district's HRA trust account. No additional contributions will be made by the district. So that is language straight from educator benefits consultants over in Cambridge, Minnesota, that we've worked with for quite some time. So that language should be far more accurate than it was before. I'm not sure if there are any questions on items that I've reviewed thus far. We did have some. Sean, this is. So this I'm going to pause and let just, you ask them if you have them. Okay, sorry, this is Dale. Just a question. So, if um, we have an employee who's taught here for eight years, they happen to pass away and they're married, their spouse would get nothing. That is, that is right? correct, based on the language that we have. Yeah. It, do we know why? I mean, why? Do we know the reasoning behind that? Uh, I know that Twyla is with us. At least I think she is. Perhaps she can answer that question because she's been in conversations with them. She was. No, not. I can. <laughs> she was there before, but she is not now. Um, so I could find that answer out. I can only say that that is the language that is presently in place. And our handbook or our certified uh, staff compensation and benefits document cannot say something different than what our arrangement with EBC says. So that's why it's the language here. If we want it to be different language, then we need to work with EBC to change that language. That would not be applicable for this change here and now. Yeah, no, I, I'm just, I guess I was just curious. It just, um... 
seemed odd to me, but if this is what they've sent us and they recommend. Um, Their you know, language is typically not arbitrary. It's typically based in state statute. Okay. This is Keith, John. Um, right, Keith. Yep. Uh, in that uh, last phrase there, the deceased employee, spouse, and or dependents, should that read the uh, HRA's dedicated beneficiary um, rather than a spouse and dependent? So the last sentence of the first portion of green, the deceased employee's spouse and or dependents, that is where you're reading? Yes, I'm just wondering in some situations, would that HRA be, or can it even be uh, delegated to somebody else as a beneficiary? Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that the language that is there is what was directed to us by EBC. Uh, does beneficiaries need to be there? I couldn't speak to that, to be honest with you. And I wouldn't want to wager to guess, but I could certainly find out. All we'd have to do is ask them. Yeah, there'd be a couple questions. I will certainly have Twyla ask them. She's, again, been in constant communication with them because none of this is easy it's it's entirely complicated yeah thank you so this is the second you. reading of the certified and support staff handbook but this is seems like it's the first reading for compensation Please. benefits correct no nope, this is the second time we've seen this you haven't seen this language but this one time written in this way it was not entirely like this so um we can certainly look at this again in June because none of this becomes active until July 1. Oh, so we could table this and get some you sure can. answers until um, for the June board meeting. Yeah, we could find out what that beneficiary answer is. Maybe there's a really good answer that we're just not aware of, or maybe, it, or maybe it's something else. I don't know. We'll find out and we'll look at it again in June. All right. I, well, I make a motion. Items this in this sure. document uh, on page seven leaves an emergency uh, you had indicated last month to make the language read rather than major uh, for it to be non-elective uh, in conversation with twyla and becky we uh, opted to put emergency non-elective because you could have non-elective surgery and it be scheduled four months from now which sort of doesn't constitute an emergency at that point so we changed it to emergency non-elective surgery, as in you were in a car accident and something needed to go down because of that, you would be able to use uh, leaves uh, in the emergency category. And then the green portion changed it to be more clear. Certified staff do not have to take a personal day for a funeral. Certified staff will be allowed to use an emergency day for use an emergency day for any funeral they attend. So that sort of makes it as succinct as can be. Any questions on those items since we talked about those last time? So we should add the word day after emergency in that? We should, yes. Okay. And those are the changes that exists in that document and again we can look at that in June and add that word day and also find out the beneficiary. Are there any other um, questions or discussion on this? Otherwise I'll make a motion to table this until June. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Um, all right, I guess the uh, second reading for the certified staff handbook and support staff handbook compensation and benefits revision will be uh, tabled in June for the June meeting. For the certified staff, there's still a support staff version of that. We might need to table that too, but we'll look at it and see where we stand. The support staff handbook, there are not many changes. There weren't originally, and I and, and nothing has been added. Um, looking at it as I go here, paging through it. I don't see anything that 
there's nothing that needs to be attended to, though there are items in the compensation and benefits document that need to be looked at. So I'm gonna go there at this time. In that document, on the third page, you'll see the same uh, green font change that Becky did to make it more visually appealing and understood, if you will. And that's been twice in two different sections there. Underneath that is the health in lieu of, again, adopting the, the plan document language. So we made that change. And I think that is, that's it. So really the only item that needs to be brought back is the certified staff compensation and benefits item. The other three should be good to go unless you want all of them to be on the agenda. We could certainly put them all on the agenda for June. That's up to you guys. Move we approve the changes to the support staff and compensation benefits revisions. Second. On favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, the support staff handbook and compensation and benefits revisions are approved. The certified staff handbook and compensation benefits revisions will be tabled until June. Uh, next item. Uh, Becky, before you continue, um, we just want to make a note that Shar is still present at the meeting. Her computer died, so she's just joining me on my computer. Okay. Hi. And you're socially distancing in each yes. one in each corner. It's very impressive. So the next uh, item would be the uh, 2021 staff contracts. Okay, the district office, and I should say, Becky has been working fast and furious on getting contracts and letters of appointment ready for staff members, and. It's been a process in that we don't see everybody and we don't get to hand them out and get them turned in and collect them in the old fashioned way. Things have been done through the mail and electronically. So it's been a little harder. So we have certified staff contracts issued, bus driver contracts issued and support staff letters of appointment. Letters of appointment in essence states, this is what your appointment will be, your job will be come fall of the next school year or July 1, if that happens to be the case of the next school year. So all of those uh, items have been issued and they're due back in by the end of next week. So those will be collected up here. And then the next round of contracts, which are not on the agenda, but you'll see that next month our service administrators, district team members is what those folks are and administrative team members. And those you'll see in the month of June. So you'll need to take action on certified staff contracts, bus driver contracts, and letters of appointment. I'll second, Jeff. I'll make a motion that we approve those contracts. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, the um, contracts are approved. The next item on the agenda, uh, personnel action. We heard several references to this, hirings by administrators and Mr. Fern, but um, now we're looking at the personnel action. Personnel items for the month of May 2020. And I would like to um, applaud the efforts of the administrative team members and their staff members for conducting interviews in a Zoom-like fashion. It's nothing we've ever done before. And yes, it is hard to get a feel when somebody's in the little four by four box on the screen. It's, it's, it's interesting and a little different, but we've made it happen. And, and I believe having met many of these folks that we've got some excellent folks coming to the school district of England. We have resignations that you'll see there for John Cochran in speech and language at the elementary, Christine Mathias, speech and language at the intermediate, uh, Christy Salmon for JV Volleyball, and Caitlin Schwanke for C-Team Volleyball. And we have new employees, assignment changes, or athletic contracts for Emily Beckman in speech and language, Julia Eisenman, Title I, 
Elementary, Dustin McMurphy at the Intermediate, Nathan McNaughton. Did I say that correctly, Orly? Okay, I did. Well, yeah, fifth grade, intermediate. Cameron Schaefer, assistant cross country. Allison Servais, her special ed at the intermediate. Uh, Catherine Steele, special ed middle. And Mark Fold for JV volleyball. So you'll see in some cases, folks left and we hired those very same positions in the same document here. And you'll need to take action on those. We'll approve the personnel changes and resignations and new hires. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Um, motion carries and the uh, personnel action, resignations and new employees changes contracts are approved. Um, I believe that is the last action item and we do not need to go back into closed session. Uh, therefore, I will um, make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Say it again. Second. Second. Okay, I'll take a roll call. Um, Aaron? Yes. Shar? Yes. Dale? Yes. Keith? Yes. All right. All right, thank you, we're adjourned. To everybody out in Zoom land for chiming in and helping us get through this. We'll see what happens in June. Thank you, have a nice night. Thank you. See ya.